Hi, welcome to another episode in our CEO series here on Earn, Grow, Invest. I'm very excited to meet with Alexander Melville from Tropical Battery. It's one of those interviews I've been wanting to have for a very long time now, so hopefully you're as excited as I am. So we're going to get to speak to, to Alexander, hear about the company, hear about some of the, just some some highlights on, on the most recent financials that we would have seen, hear about some of the future plans of the company, and pretty much just about anything that our community members would want to know as well. So as usual, it's going to be a great discussion. Be sure the very first thing I'm going to ask you to do is like this video. We need to get more likes so that our, our community expands. If it's your very first time, we do have other forms of content that I encourage you to check out after this video. But let's just roll the intro. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, welcome again. If it's your first time here, just let me know in, in the comments below that you're joining us for the very first time. I'm going to open in prayer as we normally do here. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to see this day. We pray, Lord, that as investors, you'll give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We pray for the ability to make wise investment decisions for ourselves and our families. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, yes, yes, Andrew, I'm looking forward to this to be a great discussion as well. All right, guys, please welcome with me Alexander Melville. Alexander, how are you? I'm great, thanks, and I'm happy to be here. Great, thank you. I'm happy to have you as well. Thank you for accepting our invite to be here. So, um, yeah, we're, we're just going to jump right in. Um, tell us, you know, a little bit about Tropical Battery. Help us to understand the company as a whole, right? Because you were founded many, many years ago. The company has kind of transformed over the years. So help us to understand Tropical Battery Company. Yeah, so I think... As, as you um, alluded to, we are definitely a 70-year-old household name generally in the battery space, automotive battery space. Uh, so I'm not going to go into too much of that. But I think where we are today and our journey to, to getting here is interesting and also what we're trying to achieve in the next few years. Um, you know, we, we're, we're, we're really what's called an energy storage business because 85% of our sales effectively are battery sales. So, and, and when we, we broaden the definition of, instead of just being a, an automotive battery company, car battery company, uh, and we, we kind of relabeled ourselves energy storage, we realized there's just so much more happening in the energy storage space in terms of renewable energy, uh, even utility scale projects that, that use solar and wind, and then they need at nighttime battery storage or energy storage at night, which is fastly you know becoming a huge space because the price of batteries in the lithium ion phosphate and all that have come down significantly yeah. and and so it now actually you know makes a lot more sense to have that uh, five years ago it was too prohibitive to to, to have the, the the batteries as well as the renewables now it is really making you know starting to make sense so we're super excited from the big picture about our space that we're in uh, because it just seems to be a, a growing space. Everything I read on Bloomberg or wherever, it, it's in a great space. Um, so that said, that's kind of what, what was some of the things we've been doing recently, kind of reimagining this 70-year-old business and how do we take it to the next 70 years um, and, and, and what's needed to do that. And it's not just conventional automotive batteries, which we think still has a great future. Uh, even every electric car comes with a conventional battery in it which you know, a lot of people don't know, that runs the accessories, the windshield wipers, the radio, everything. And then, it, of course, it has a big battery that replaces the engine. So yeah. all of them come with two. So we think there's, even as we transition to EVs, you know, we still have a good core market. But uh, again, this new space of renewables and, and, uh, and, and storage for renewables is very exciting and a fast-growing area, which we're kind of focusing on. 
definitely sounds exciting as well. I know we've had many discussions in our Telegram group about the future of the space. So I'm very interested to see how the remainder of the conversation goes. So your most recent financials mentions what's, what's called your diversification strategy. Can you tell us about that strategy and what it entails? Yeah, sure. Um, and I kind of just hinted on it a little bit, uh, of course, diversifying out of the conventional battery space. So there's three ways we're, we're going to do that, which is uh, broaden our product line, uh, also look to new markets, which is again, geographical diversification, and of course, also uh, acquisition uh, as well. So we look at those three areas of focus for, for, for growth and diversification. And uh, yeah, so we're, that, that's kind of our strategy, how we, how we see that um, playing out by focusing on those three areas to diversify. Okay, we're gonna get to the, the acquisition strategy a little later. That's definitely one of the questions that we have. So in terms of if we're to get an understanding of, of maybe some of your most, I guess, profitable or fastest growing segment in terms of products or services, what, what would you say those are? So I think it definitely comes out of our retail space. So we have six retail stores. We just opened one last year. Uh, so moving from five to six. And uh, of course, in the retail, you're getting cash and you're getting a higher margin uh, than our wholesale business, where we sell to you know a thousand different gas stations, auto part to stores, uh, fleet customers at a discounted price. Um, but at retail, that's where we make the most margin. I wouldn't want to divulge you know which product categories are most profitable because then my competitors would go maybe want to go into that space uh more okay. readily but definitely retail is a great strategy and it's been a, a huge balance for us being a retail and a wholesale customer some people just do one or the other um they're just they go full retail um or they go full wholesale and and we have chosen to do both and that choice has helped us uh it significantly in that we it allows us to give greater customer service to to, our, to the end user so more b2c business so it's all b2c with the retail and then our, our wholesale business more kind of b2b because then they and their staff resell and their teams resell to, to to the end consumer not us um and so yeah it's it's been very a, a great strategy for us to do both uh you know retail and distribution Okay, so so when you mention this 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 um, geographical expansion that you hope to do later on, will that will the same model persist? Will it be same um, multi pronged approach in terms of um, how the business is done? Yes, um, there are going to be some markets that might be slightly different, uh, but we have signed an MOU, and uh, you know, in in a different country, we are looking to acquire 50% of the business down there that is in more of the renewable energy space, uh, but, but with the plan as well, and that their market is actually, you know, significantly larger than J the Jamaican market. And, and this um, should allow us to, even if we get, you know, we're 70% market share here in Jamaica, almost, you know, even we have 10% of that market, it's almost like doubling Jamaica in a way. So if just 10% market share down there, if we can achieve it successfully, uh, we think it's going to be, yeah, good for our growth strategy. And, and just as how we have in our sister company, uh, at one point I was I, I'm the treasury of uh, Chuck of Caribbean, and I was one point the CEO for a year or two, uh, and also over the last 20 odd years kind of helped their growth strategy into these five or six countries that we're currently in. And even we had some failures, like we opened in some countries and it didn't work, and then we, we had to um sell out or retreat and then go back so i've learned a lot in in that um sister company on how to open in new countries which is important your management team needs to have experience and like kind of go and open in a brand new country there's a lot of local issues that and laws and this and that you need to to make sure you do it thoughtfully it has taken us a little longer than i thought a tropical to get it you know done i want i still think we're going to get it done this year um calendar year by december but but uh, it, we need to be thoughtful and make sure we're making the right decisions and partnering with the right companies and have the right strategy. Uh, yes, okay. so that's part of our, 
um, growth strategy in terms of regionally expanding. Okay, so since you mentioned it, uh, we are pretty much about what three and a half months from the end of the year. Uh, so how far along that process would you say you are? Fifty percent. I think yeah. As I said, we we did sign an MOU, um, and and that is um, it will we're not in the due diligence process, um, okay. which I shouldn't take more than another couple of weeks, and and that. You know, once that goes well, I didn't want to announce anything because I'm not yeah, really. Honestly, honestly. We have something signed, like you know, an actual you know share purchase agreement. Um, but these are things we're exploring, and and I think oh. uh, once the due diligence goes well, yeah, in in October uh, or or November, we should be able to close something. Uh, there you that. go. That, that's that's all we're hoping for. <laughs> just yeah. uh, just a broad idea because we understand that these things take time and. You know, their the final details need to be worked out, but having an appreciation for and an estimate as well, we can look to hear something maybe in, in the news or otherwise will just help, I think, potential investors to understand how 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 that would look, right? Um so based on the fact that you gave us at a high level what what the strategy is in terms of approach. What, what opportunities or areas do you see for growth currently? So apart from the geo expansion, what opportunities do you see maybe even within Jamaica for growth? Yes, for sure. The, definitely new product lines and they have been doing well. We've been selling solar panels. Uh, we just got an inverter line as well. So, so things to do with renewable energy, we see um, as a great growth area. And, and um, as we bring the container panels, they, they go. And, and I think that is uh, a great area for us. We still have looked at um, even partnering or acquiring companies here locally, but those talks have uh, not been fruitful so far. So I guess we just have to wait for the, the right moment here. Okay. Do you, do you find that maybe, I guess, companies aren't open to it locally? I know it's a, maybe a strange question to ask, but... I know you said it hasn't been as fruitful. Are you able to maybe quantify why or that would be too much to share? Um, no, because I'm just generalizing and I, I wouldn't name the companies. So, so yes, it, it's been locally, the, the market is evolving. And I think Jamaica has be, is becoming like the most sophisticated financial market center in the Caribbean in terms of trading, equities, private equity, you know, debt banks. You know, we, we really... Um, are evolving at a great pace. And I really think it's how you create wealth, you know, for all Jamaicans. And it, it is one of the reasons we listed was to broaden the ownership, sell 25% of the, the business to the public. And, 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 and a lot of our staff and team members bought in. And I, and I thought it was great. Instead of me and my two brothers and some other private equity guys owning 100% of Tropical, it's better uh, you have your team you know, just, just putting your money in the bank at 5% or whatever, it, it's hard no, to create. No, no, less, less than 1%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't, you can't, it's hard to create wealth that way. Investing, yeah. which is what, you know, when you had sent me the, the note, I just love the name, you know, learn, grow, it, you know, invest. It really is a good mantra and a good purpose, that mission that I think you're on. And so it's happy to share our story and hopefully maybe help somebody else or not, um, yeah. you know, understand our business model, our business principles, and our experiences. So I think, yeah. yeah, I think it's 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 important. Jamaica is evolving, but still in the private family sector space, which like 80, 90 percent of businesses are family businesses, especially you know in SMEs, small. The, the yeah, uh, yeah it's 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 tough. They're still you know want to keep more private, haven't evolved into that, but it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Okay. Understood. Understood. So you mentioned this point about team members owning a percentage of shares. I noted in your report as well that you said up to 63% of the team own shares. Is that goal okay. maybe for 100% of the team? Is that something that... I would love to get it to 100%. Um, and we have pretty low staff turnover. So um, I think it's 90% is probably achievable. 100 is just always going to be our target. But from time to time, you know, people transition in and out of the business and it takes a while to to educate um, that someone who has who is not used to investing, who has never yes, been taught. Very true. We don't teach investing in high school or, you know, I don't know, very rarely or very little. So 
they're thinking open a, a brokerage account or open you know it, it's a it's a three to six months kind of selling process to explain to the staff hey buy some shares we'll we'll help you figure out some shares and sometimes we gift shares a, a lot to nice. to the um to the entry level um staff team um as well but they need to they still have to go through the process of signing up and opening an account you know with whichever investment brokerage uh, uh, bank of their choice yeah that that's definitely something that we can help you with that's actually one of the things we do at learn grow invest so if you want to you know have your team learn investing that's something that we can talk about offline of course but yeah we, we love that you can understand that definitely that it's the cycle or the process or the timeline for a person to get comfortable enough to invest takes time like most persons are not it's not the first time you invite them they're going to say yes so they need to start of this kind of education process and then they'll you know slowly you know dip their toe in and we we'll see where it goes from there all right so um are there any maybe products so we're talking about products that you saw opportunities for growth are there products or maybe product lines that you think that you're thinking about discontinuing maybe or, or moving away from um, no um, most of our, our, our product lines are really you know we do track our inventory turnover pretty well uh, I'm sure I mean I think we did like some windshield wafer blades um, windshield wafer things once and yeah there was like a slow mover so we wouldn't do that again but okay. the, our main product lines are fast moving we, we like to think of ourselves in the necessity type business there's accessory type business which is more disposable income we are a necessity when you, when your battery dies you need another battery to drive your car or to power your generator at home if you have one or, or power a truck or a train or a crane you know we sell boat batteries crane batteries you know er, everything um from small to, to large and and so it's a necessity business and we like that model uh, of being in that space it, it's less impactful and more resilient as we even saw in covid it, i mean still it was it affected us some but but um but certainly not as much as other businesses in tourism and hospitality who really were, were impacted so we like we, we love the space and uh I, I think you know we are we are just focused on our energy storage and and growth in renewables because we think the environment is important we think you know education is important we we, we we really are passionate about these things and, and so uh it, it's yeah it's it's just okay. a good space okay. all right so um a question here that i have from the from the community members so with the demand for precious metals increasing mm -hmm. and with no inventory supply will tropical venture into into the the business of large-scale recycling of batteries especially for evs okay so right now we do we are the largest exporter of uh spent batteries in jamaica which is lead acid and it's not really so precious metal not like you know gold silver or those lithium iron ones uh, but uh we we collect probably almost 100 metric tons a month and export uh you know, it's five to, to seven containers of, of, of batteries every month uh, and that is probably seven percent of our sales eight percent of our sales is, is export and we earn us dollars from that and and we're also you know being environmentally friendly by clean, clearing up going into the dump going into you know every battery collection place to get these old you know the older um, batteries collected and out so we do some recycling but really it's just collection packaging and shipping out to a licensed recycler in terms of lithium ion we are being certified uh right now to to collect and 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 and, and store and then export lithium ion batteries as well for for the the all of the car companies atl honda toyota they don't want to they they want to make sure that the end of life of the battery and it's required by their manufacturer by AT, you know mercedes toyota mishibishi you know all the big brands when they're selling EVs into a market, they will not sell you a brand new EV unless you show them as a dealer how the battery, when it dies in eight years from today, um, uh, how they're going to recycle that battery. And so we are, we, we're going through a training process and licensing because uh, it, it's an international body that you have to be trained through, licensed, 
to, to, to obviously store them, package them, because there is some, uh, you know, requirements on storage and they can be, you know, dangerous and hazardous. So we will be uh, not setting up a recycling plant. We investigated setting up a recycling plant, but it's just Jamaica's economy is too small or the amount of vehicles that we have is just too small to set up a scalable recycling plant here that would that would be profitable from our research. Okay, okay. All right, so um, a question here from Limitless Podcast uh, related to what we're talking about, which is um, what is your percentage share of lithium solar and solar battery market? Um, we're tiny. Uh, um, so I think in terms of our sales, probably two or 3% of our sales, which is great, which means we have a lot of room to grow. Uh, in terms of, uh, again, we only got into the, the solar space uh, in terms of panel stuff, you know, three years ago. So it's, it's, a, it's a really new product line for us. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, it, it is growing leaps and bounds. Uh, and I think in terms of market share, I don't have any stats from like Staten on what is the size of the, the market compared to what we're selling. But I would estimate probably 5 to 10% market share uh, in, in the overall um, space, you know, it's a small amount of our sales, but, but I think we're about five to 10% of those sales. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're going to shift the conversation a little bit. Um, so with, with, um, so with, uh, the question that I have here from the, from our, our community member is with tropical mobility being a subsidiary focusing on EVs is a company planning to train existing staff to service EVs. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, I think we answered that one already. Next question is, is there any consideration at this time to list NRV on the JSC? A part of our business strategy, yes, with CAC was within two to three years uh, listing. So not, not now, but maybe 2024 or 2025, uh, the plan would be to list it and kind of spin it off and list it. Which awesome. Uh, awesome. would create, I think, value for everybody and also allow it to really focus on its on its mandate. Yeah. All right. And next question is what key partnerships will will enable Tropical to continue to be successful? So maybe some of the key partnerships that work for you now and what are some of the potential partnerships that you may be looking for? Sure, great. Great question. Um a, a lot of our success has come from you know, being a manufacturer of batteries, you know, 20, 30 years ago uh, was, a, you know, we, we gained a lot of expertise in that space and understand how that works. And, and then since then, that, that expertise we used to then choose like the right suppliers. So we have great partnership supplier arrangements with, you know, four or five different huge battery companies uh, globally. And, and those partnerships uh, allowed us to, when all of these shipping logistics problems you'd hear, you know, kind of heard about, uh, we we did not experience too much of that at all because we were able to our, our relationships and partnerships with these suppliers allowed us to be on the top of the list to make sure that we um, had product and inventory here because a lot some of our competitors ran out, some of them couldn't get product, they were not on on the list, so uh, we we. We value those partnerships. I guess that's in the, in the past, in the, in the future. Um, obviously, we'll maintain those products and, and um, those relationships and partnerships. Uh, I, I think real, real partnerships uh, is going to be when we expand into different countries. Uh, we usually always take a local partner. And uh, we have found that it just makes so much more sense when Chuck trying and set up in some country 100% owned by us. You just you have so many more problems, but yeah. when you have a fifty percent partner or a seventy percent, you know, you're, where you're majority and you have a local partner who is vested and aligned with you, uh, things uh, things work a lot smoother, and 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 we have found that that creates a more successful uh, business model by opening in a country with a local partner. So that would be in the future, and that's exactly how we're structuring. This one and any of the other ones we're, we're, we're looking at to have a local partner in each of the countries that we would set up. So I'm going to ask this, a, I'm sure a very probably difficult question to answer, but let's say in the next five years, how many countries do you hope to be in? I would say 
Um, very difficult question, as you said. But our goal, um, you know, we want to be doing a billion dollars in profit, not, you know, not 200 million like we think we'll do this year kind of thing. Uh, and, and so that is going to take a lot of uh, growth, focus and, and teamwork. And I would say maybe three countries in the next three to five years. Uh, three more or three in yeah. total? I would say three more okay. in the next three to five years. So I'm going to give myself a two year, two year window there between three and five because uh, yeah, just how I know these things take uh, with the best intention, take a little bit longer than you, than you anticipated. Okay. Okay. Makes sense there. So on that note, um, so let's see, let's take some of the questions that may be relating to, to that. So um, Limitless Podcast is asking any update on some of the acquisitions that you spoke about previously. So I guess we kind of alluded to this before, but you know, since it's a direct question here, um, any, any further comment to what you might have said previously? Um. Not really. I think I covered most of it. I can't really say too much about acquisitions. Um, but as I said to say, we've signed an MOU with one, which I think is a, the, you know, a pretty significant stage to get to. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, let me just scroll through some of these questions here. Um, Adin is asking what percentage of your revenue comes from the battery recycling program? Uh, yeah, like six, 7% uh, that we currently do. Uh, well, sorry, maybe seven or 8% is what we do when in our export, which is all, all of our exports is sent out to uh, recycle. No, no, recently, sorry. We also exported to Cayman, you know, new, new batteries. Uh, so we have started shipping, which is our kind of our first time this year that we've, you know, sold to different countries, uh, you know, proper new batteries from our inventory here. And, and we have an active program to, you know, if we can drop ship directly from the manufacturer to different countries and we have a good relationship with either a distributor or someone in these countries, we're also looking at that as well as a way to, it's more B2B where, where to enter the market uh, versus acquisition and then partnering and then both of you kind of rolling out that growth. So, yeah. Okay. But eight, about seven, eight percent is is export. All right. So there was mention about a two hundred and fifty million bond in the last report. What's the status of that that bond, yep. and what what will the funds be used for? Sure. Good. Good question. Uh, yes, we are definitely. I would say midway in that process. I'm hoping by September thirtieth. Uh, before the end of our fiscal year end, uh, or maybe October uh, if it runs over. But everything is running smoothly with that. We have great investor um, interest, and it's a sm relatively small bond. Uh, and and the, the, the process that we're in now is really with the JSE, um, and just making sure you, you have to you know, check certain boxes with the, um, the trustees services and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing all of that paperwork to, to be able to register the bond and uh, you know, get approval um, for the bond. So, okay. well, yeah, I would say by September 30th is our target date for it and it's been going relatively smooth as it relates to what we're using the proceeds of that bond for is again, acquisition um, uh, and um, yeah, and growth, really growth and, and, and to make sure that we, uh, yeah, hit our growth targets and this is going to help us to acquire shares and businesses and make sure we have the we have great liquidity already, but you know some of these transactions are a little more uh, than than the profit we're generating internally. So so we raise money to you know kind of make them happen. Okay. Do you have a preference normally for how money is raised, bond rights issue, APO? You know. So I think is debt preference. is usually the best way generally in terms of the cheapest for existing shareholders generally. Uh, APOs and and that I think are they're more dilutive and so you know unless you can make sure that your earnings per share uh of the company you're acquiring so if you're buying a company that's making ten dollars and and um and you make sure whatever shares you issue in that apo to purchase that company you know it, it, it's it's at uh their profitability is at a higher 
rate yeah. than, than than what your earnings per share were. So you you will um it will be accretive to shareholders and not dilutive in a way in terms of earning dollar earnings per shares. So when yeah. you should, yeah. So that's usually our first focus, and then if we have to raise equity or, or, or something like that, I think is our second option. But but no real preference. Okay. Okay. And that follows with a question from Limitless Podcast. Would you guys consider a rights issue given the possibility that the junior market limit is being raised hopefully within the next year? That could be cool. Yeah. I mean, they're is it from like 500 to 750 or something. That's that. That's what the, the, the conversations have been. Yes. Yeah. We've also even thought of like cross listing in Trinidad or something like that as well to, to um, I don't know, just we've conversations. Seen, we've, seen, so. we've seen cross listing have maybe not the desired effect for some Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, I haven't really been following that much, I guess. But, yeah. but again, I guess the first avenue we always look to do is once our debt to equity ratios are in line, which we're way, we're not even at a multiple of equity, we're, we're like 0. 0.5 or I don't know, 0.6 of equity in terms of debt to equity so um yeah. so we're very low uh debt to equity ratio and and so i think we we have more room there uh, and that's where we focus on first and then um if for some reason we were uh, not comfortable with the debt to equity ratio then maybe we'd go the rights issue or the apo uh way to to, to raise instead of adding debt okay okay I mean, just at, at I guess the, the I guess the point what you're saying is if the funds should become available as in that limit being increased, then you will try to take advantage if possible. Is that correct? So yeah, to yeah. ascertain from what you're saying. All right, cool. All right. Um, let me see if there are any other questions here. Okay. All right. So um, next question here. Um, what's the plan in terms of tropical in the short term and then long term? So we mentioned that sort of five year plan for for expansion. But um, I guess at, at a high level, again, what sort of what, what would tropical look like overall in the short term? So maybe the next one to two years and then long term, which would be, I guess, far past that point. Sure, good. Um, but currently, we're doubling our profit each quarter, which is great. So, like, we're at one hundred percent profit growth year over year, and uh, and I think we want to keep doing that. And and I, you know, ways to keep doing that is making sure we're running the business very efficiently. Uh, make sure that we're also rewarding our team members with incentives and and stuff like that to keep that growth and profitability going. Uh, we did even like a mid-year um, salary adjustment, which usually, you know, once a year we do a salary review based on inflation and, and other factors. But uh, even at six months, we did a, an increase of 10% generally uh, to, to, to keep everybody to, to pace uh, with inflation. Uh, and as we can see, it hasn't really had much effect on our bottom line, which is great. Uh, and I think the team appreciates it. So... So I think the, the, in the short term, we have an expansion plan for Grove Road, which is our number one retail store. It's actually one of the, the highest volume unit battery stores in like the entire Caribbean and central Florida in, in terms of like just a number of units sold that one there in Halfway Street Grove Road. We bought, our sister company bought a property right beside it, uh, right adjacent to it, and we're we're, we're trying to, we've already allowed them now to start using all the parking, which is great. So that, you know, it's sometimes just too busy there and we need more parking spaces. Uh, but now we have a, a plan to kind of, uh, with the architects to, to really, you know, knock down the building and then really build out a bigger center there at our number one uh, retail store. Again, retail is very profitable for us. We're like 40% retail sales you know, uh, versus 60% distribution sales. Uh, uh, and so that 40% is probably represents 70% of the bottom line where wholesale, you know, probably represents the, the other 30. So it's, it's important to, to understand, uh, uh, I think that expansion in retail, which should take, I don't know, maybe 12 months to get sorted, but it's already been, it's already benefiting us some by using the additional parking spaces, 
but it, we we're going to create more and create more of a retail experience and different products and uh, uh, to to be able to display and sell in there. So we're, we're very excited about that in the short term and getting that um, project completed, you know, within 12 months. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm just doing a quick scan through for the questions that were sent to me beforehand. I believe there is one that we got on Telegram earlier. Um, so this question is from Marvel. She's asking what plans are being made to grow the, the renewable energy, energy sector for the business, specifically against the push towards EV slash hybrid vehicles. I don't know if it's that, if that is specifically in line with the push. So yeah, gotcha. Um, I think that's, yeah. yeah, I think we, we are the hybrids and EVs, as I said, I use a conventional battery. So that's yeah. not uh, in contrary to, to any of our growth strategies because EVs are going to be good for our business um, in, in two ways. We can sell them a regular battery, you know, as normal would be. And then also when they go, when that battery dies, we can then collect that old battery uh store it package it and ship it out in containers and make a profit on shipping those batteries out so that that's important so evs are are net net probably more profitable to tropical battery than a regular combustion engine car uh, because of just that you know that component uh we, we'll be able to export out two things we'll export out the regular lead battery in 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 the ev uh, in our normal exports and then we'll also export out the lithium i am and lithium ion phosphate batteries as well. So I think in addition to, to how EVs play out in that, we also hired a, a new staff member, a uh, new team member, Oliver Hill, to kind of head that division. So to, to give it focus and, and show that we're serious about this area, we hired somebody specifically, you know, to, 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 to try and run and, and help us grow those areas. So. So that's part of the strategy is hiring the right team uh, to, to, to execute uh, the growth in that area. And he's been very effective in bringing in new product lines for us. Uh, and, and even with this uh, acquisition that, that we're, or, or partnership we're looking at, uh, he was very instrumental in bringing that company to our, to kind of in putting it in front of us. Uh, and I think, uh, yeah, so hiring the team and, and then, of course, you know, getting those product lines and then marketing and selling them, putting them through our channels, advertising, marketing, letting everybody know that we do these things now, which uh, it takes time to, to, to get everybody to remember that we're not just a battery business. We're, yeah. you know, yeah. an energy storage company and renewable energy and, and adding using product lines. But uh, it will get there. And we're we are very happily. Um, People are just coming to us now and we're getting more and more calls for solar panels and things. And like just with very limited advertising, you know, we don't spend a lot on advertising, uh, but we are seeing significant growth at 30% this year, top line, 100% bottom line. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the right trend we want to be for a, uh, you know, a, a company our size. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, so some questions here coming in on on YouTube, so how long is the stock mark? Uh, is the stock material projected to last until further significant supply? I guess he's asking about inventory levels. So, what what's our current stock? How long are current stock levels projected to last? So, yeah, good good question. Um, but again, we we get stock in every month. You know, ten to twenty containers of, of batteries. Uh, we we have we we're currently by some matrix running a little overstocked uh, and and we purposely did that to make sure that if we did have supply chain hiccups you know we wouldn't run out of needed sizes because when someone needs a battery they need it and and, and um so so we have no no i have no issues where we think we're going to be running out of anything uh we're we're almost our average inventory generally uh, into last year was around 500 million in inventory we would carry. We're carrying about 800 million in inventory now. So we're almost at like double the inventory we normally would carry. Uh, so I don't see us having, and, and, and every month as we sell 200 million a month or 300 million, whatever, you know, um, 250 a month, 
uh, we, we replenish that with, you know, with another 200 million, 300 million of inventory coming. We want to keep during this period with Ukraine and shipping issues and, and all that kind of stuff, we're going to keep maintain high levels of inventory because uh, we order three, four months in advance to get the order cycle. So we've already ordered three, four months in advance and, and, um, and we've already already upsized our inventory. So I don't see us having any um, inventory issues in the short term or, or, or the medium term. Um, I don't know what, if a year down the road, something unexpected happens, but, but at least for the next 12 months, I can't see us having any inventory issues based on our order cycle and based on the level of inventory that we have now. Okay, okay. A Limitless Podcast is asking, what's a typical interest rate on a tropical finance loan? So we don't really do any loans yet. Uh, we did set up a tropical finance company uh, to help people acquire like the larger, uh, the larger systems that we would sell. Like if we were selling a larger solar system for, you know, millions of dollars Jamaican, um, then we would we if we think their their credit risk is is great we will finance that for them but we're just really getting going with that business uh we're not like courts yet where we're financing everything but but if we are exploring that you know even on a battery or tire in certain countries they finance four tires for someone and four batteries and you can um once your credit risk is good um if you know them you know whatever uh then you can be more profitable you just have to have more working capital because then you'll be able to charge a little interest on the batch, which makes yeah. the batch more profitable. So we're exploring that, but we're not really, that's not really happening just yet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But All right. Uh, Limitless podcast again. Any plans to partner to supply companies like Wickton who are undertaking renewable energy products? Yes. We are certainly um, in talks with any of the major renewables that um because the, the 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 batteries are key components and we already have some great supplier relationships locked up we are i think we're in a great position to win some of those businesses some of them they want to try and bring in the batteries themselves because it's a big order or whatever but then they have nobody to warranty them or service them or you, you, you understand so i think uh we are yes we are focused on that space and we have sales members and teams focused on saying hey when you get in your if you win this new i think jps is putting out a big tender and and a part of that tender has batteries and you know and renewables and all of that we are in in talks and trying to see if we can be you know win the battery side of those contracts which should be huge huge contracts some of them are 20 million dollars us worth of batteries like 10 million US worth of batteries. that's like that was the 20 million, I think, is our entire sales last year. So when one of those contracts to supply batteries to, to, to the grid, to JPS, it would be very material for, for us, for sure. Great, great. All right, so Elrico is asking, are there any plans to stock the hybrid batteries? Um, so hybrid batteries are pretty much the same convention. We do bring in them now. They're called like stop start batteries. They're some of them are, are what are called calcium calcium um, batteries. Uh, I drive a hybrid right now, and and I, we have we carry batteries for it uh, as well. And and it's a very similar to the conventional battery. Uh, we don't have plans right now to stock the actual the the lithium ion ones because those are provided by the you know, the manufacturer of the car and they do that to their side, just like they provide the engine for a car, you know, um, they would provide that larger battery uh, and the hybrids carry these larger batteries, uh, which is, is they're specific to each manufacturer. You can't just, I can't, um, okay. I can't go and buy them, but I can supply the, 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 the battery that starts the engine in the hybrids and the battery that runs the accessories and all of that. And so we do carry those uh, currently, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So Jay is asking, is the company planning to sell any new products in the upcoming future as in to, to provide more than just batteries? Yes, we do. We do oils. We have our own oil now, uh, tropical oil. We, we do, um, I don't know if you can see behind me, but we do like tire stuff. We do a bunch of, um, uh, uh, uh other products, uh, and, and, um, 
and several of them, the new windscreen wash, you know, a, a bunch of different accessory products. And we will continue to explore new product lines that fit our business model uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, I guess a comment here by Limitless Podcast. So Wigton was developing a solar system at Norman Manley recently. That could be some good business going forward for for tropical. I guess he's he's, he's alluding to there, and they have spoken about bigger and better projects coming up. So, I guess some yeah, insight. it's exciting. It's, I think it's a very exciting time to be in the energy storage space because it's just, uh, especially in the Caribbean. I mean, we we have sun. We're near the equator, you know. So renewables plus storage. It solves so it checks so many boxes. Yeah. You don't have to spend all this foreign exchange buying oil. You know, the more and more of our grid and the more and more of our homes that go solar plus batteries and come 80, 90 percent off the grid, it is it's huge for the economy and, and it and the environment because it's just more environmentally friendly. Yeah. For sure. So Archer is asking, are you breaking into new markets such as the Dominican Republic? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> we are looking at things in the Dom rep. Yes. In, in, yes. OK, OK. Yeah. All right. I'm just looking intently to see if there's anything that um, I'm missing here. Okay, so Alana is saying that, you know, the advice that you have for the youth is admirable. Absolutely love speaking with you and learning. Um, Orville is saying that, you know, you seem so humble and honest and that he admires you. He, he admires that in a CEO. Um, so there's some positive comments there. Um, Andrew was saying, you know, he's looking forward to a good discussion. Hopefully that has been delivered since we're almost at the end. All right, so I believe those are all the questions that we had. So typically what we do at this point in the interview, we'll ask our CEOs to, you know, give us an idea as to what type of investor they think is ideal for the company, right? So uh, who would you think, you know, Tropical is best suited for in terms of an, an, an investor? Yeah, great question. Um, I think a broad array, I think someone who's long-term uh it is a good thing I, I don't believe um i read books about warren buffett and i try to think of myself as an investor as well I, I don't just own our stock i try and buy other stocks as well uh and i think so i think one is you know someone who understands our business i think luckily i think we have a, a pretty simple business industry uh it's not hugely complicated like some tech uh, company, although we do use technology and we do, you know, keep up with the trends. So I think uh, Warren Buffett will tell you, you know, buy, buy stocks that you understand that you can buy and touch and feel their products. And if you understand their product and you think they're going to be selling products in, in the future, uh, then it's a good it's a good way to create wealth because generally they'll grow or appreciate uh, better than most. The second thing is, uh, I think we, we have paid dividends. So I think dividends, we pay dividends once a year at the end of each year. So far since listing, we've been listed two years each year. We double our dividends. We're hoping to double our dividends again this year. I can't see why it wouldn't happen. So if we can keep doubling our dividends out at the end of each year, I think then people not only get hopefully stock price appreciation, but they would also get uh, some cash uh, returns. So I think so persons who are interested in a dividend paying stock, not, not all stocks pay dividends. So uh, and thirdly, I think yeah, some long term also, not, I'm thinking mostly of the retail and investor first, but I also think some pension funds and those uh, persons who like, I would say, a stable, less volatile uh, type of uh, business, because I think, again, we are a necessity type business. And if we as a management team, you, when you're buying a company, you're buying also the management team. And if they have a good track record and experience, uh they should be able to produce similar to results you know uh of growth in in the past as they can in the future so uh, and and deal with whatever adversaries that come like covid which was you know definitely not on anybody's radar but we we made it through that time and we and we listed and and i think those are persons who want 
that stability, uh, which I think is good stock appreciation growth and dividend paying. Those are the type of investors, uh, small and large, who should uh, look at our stock. Okay. So since you mentioned investing, sorry to put you on the spot here, but don't name any names, but I, I get the impression that you you are you are an, an investor in the local market. So maybe what are some of the industries that are in your portfolio currently? Um, yeah, definitely financial, some financial. Um, obviously, I own a bunch of our stock in the automotive man managing this space. Uh, I think... Uh, I think real estate is really undervalued in Jamaica too. Like the REITs are really undervalued. Um, but I do own a little real estate. Uh, okay. And I think has even it, just has like, it physical real estate or the real estate companies? Uh, both. But, okay. but yeah, one or two as well, because I think dividend stocks are great uh, that produce a yield. And then there's a bunch of just trading, you know, separate tech, you know, like a bunch of trading stocks that I think do well, the with Sinkers, the Fontanas, the, you know, those stocks um, have, have been doing really well and I, I own some of them too, so. Okay, great, great, interesting, interesting. We've never asked a CEO that before, by the way, so you're the first person we've okay. asked that. Um, so thank you. So uh, Limitless Podcast, I'm seeing a few questions coming in here. So we have just a little bit of time left. Limitless Podcast is asking, have you considered the, the possibility of being acquired by a larger energy company, for example, Tesla, when they decide to take on the Caribbean a little bit more seriously? Well, I mean, believe you me, for the right price, maybe. But to be honest, I really think we have a great future. And there's a lot more that we can actually build out ourselves but I'm sure if they were to pay us like a hundred times what we're trading at now, I mean, maybe we consider it because it would be good for all shareholders. You, you understand? Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the decision unless it's going to be great for all shareholders. But, but, but I really think we have a good five to ten year plan. I just turned fifty, and I'm not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting a good ten year plan to sixty. That yeah. is to grow this business and and really focus on it. Uh, uh, along with some of the other stuff we do, but but really it, it's a focus on this business. And I think I genuinely believe there's just some good opportunities in this space, which if you'd have asked me, you know, five or 10 years ago, I wasn't as sure, but the way it has evolved um, yeah. in, in the energy storage space, it really is an exciting growing space. Yeah. But I, I think we are positioned with our seven-year brand and our seven, you know, and all of that. And you're right, and maybe some big company would, find that 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 attractive yeah. uh yeah if they do i have no idea but but the fact is uh we would consider anything that would be great for all shareholders if it was a really yeah. incredible deal for sure yeah. okay i understood so sebastian is saying fantastic interview thank you sebastian for that marva is asking are you planning to go beyond selling solar panels to installation and maintenance not currently um but we, it is something that we have discussed, and we, uh, through the subsidiary Enervate, they are looking at putting in that uh, as, as well. So we may sell and then they would install. Um, so technically, it would be you know, somewhat a part of us. Um, but yeah, not, it, it's not our main strategy right now. Okay. To okay. Install. All right, Limitless Podcast again with the questions. Uh, have you guys considered partnering with Tesla to install your solar roofs or power walls? Uh, we've thought about it, but have not been able to. Uh, I think there's a couple of guys here in Jamaica who are trained and they sell the Tesla wall product, uh, their battery system and stuff like that. And then sometimes they buy from us, sometimes they buy from Tesla because uh, we sell this a very similar product for, for home storage that you can kind of really stick in a room. Um, so yeah we've thought about it uh but i think the guys in the solar space we'd have to either acquire one of those companies uh and and who already have those relationships with tesla uh that i think could be workable uh and and would be a good way for us to to get into that space yeah definitely sounds like a possibility there mm -hmm. Dane is asking if there's any plan for a partnership between tropical and evergo we do um they are installing one or two charging stations on our sites uh and yes so so we are definitely in talks with evergo 
uh, and uh, I think out by our ferry location, where, uh, which is very busy, you know, Mandela is the highest traffic road in the country. No road gets more cars than that particular stretch of road from like the boulevard to, to the turnoff to um, um, Portmore, Mandeville and Ochi. That, that, that's like three, four mile section there where Fesco is as well. It, it is just insane traffic. And, and so it could be a good location where we just move to to set up a charging site as well. And, and you know, there's uh, good opportunities just actually being in that site. We've found since moving there three years ago, it has cut our transportation costs. It has cut everything. We have full solar on the roof, uh, over 100 megawatts of solar uh, on the roof. Uh, and so it reduced our energy costs. And it's just something simple about just jumping on the highway with our delivery. 60% of our business that's delivered, you know, Otras, Mobe, Mandeville, uh, all, this, all, all the parishes. But it is certainly um, a great location for, for expansion. And we do have another lot of land out there um, that we may be, you know, if we need for expansion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so Tommy, I hope you got this question answered already. Um, can we expect further expansion across the island? I think you just alluded to that. So I don't think we need to touch on it. Dalian Barnett from LinkedIn is saying, I realize a trend where companies would set up subsidiaries to handle new business lines. Is there a specific business reason for this? I think it just helps with focus. Um, sometimes when things are, things are like a division or a department of a company, it is um it it um it kind of gets grouped into it doesn't give us as, as much attention so when you create a, an own company and have somebody who leads that company it's in in our minds and from the business books i've read it, it helps to create focus and really uh and, and that focus then drives uh value and then also you can then yeah spin off that company or list that company at a later point to even unlock that value uh, greater than just a, a business unit or department. That, that's been my experience. Yeah, I agree actually with that as well. Um, Noah Azan is saying, would you say Jamaica is prepared for electronic cars at the moment? Well, I think we're, we're early, absolutely. Um, definitely early right now, but I know their um, Evergo is, is committed to put in 60 charging stations around the island uh, which those those once built and deployed uh, you know should be should put us in a good spot uh, and and when you also think about electric cars when you look at the data 80 percent of charging takes place at home or at work so actually you know you don't really yes you need a lot of places to charge just in case you're going to from kingston to mobe for the day and you have some you know you, you need to, to charge when you're in mobe but technically, a lot of charging just takes place at home and at work. And, and, and if you have solar at office or, or something at office, it's really easy to, 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 to get that done. And that's when you get the real benefit of, of, um, of using the, the, the electric vehicles if you have solar wherever you're charging. You know, and solar at home, solar at work is just it makes the car almost free to drive because they are very low maintenance issues. So uh, what would you say, so you, do, you, you did say that you think you're early, but when do you think that we'll see some real adoption of, of electric, um, electric cars in Jamaica? I think, I think we'll probably get to 30, 40% adoption of electric cars. Uh, I, I'm sure the car dealers have a much better estimate than me, but it's going to take probably five to 10 years before we get to that kind of tipping point. I don't even think we're at like one or 2% right now in terms of EV, fully electric vehicles. We do have, I think probably five or 10% hybrids. I, I don't know the stats, but the hybrids are definitely higher right now than, than EVs. Um, and yeah, five to 10 years, you know, I think you can probably get the 30% market share, 40% market share. It would be great to get even higher, but I think once the infrastructure is in, which shouldn't be more than another year, uh, we'd, we'd, we'd ever go. Uh, and the fact that everybody charges at home, uh, if, if we have, people need to also adopt solar at home to make sure that they're not yes. really getting their light bills significantly up with charging at home. Um, or if the place at work where like, we're going to have charging, uh, put in charging stations at work that will run from our solar. Um, you know, I think 
that makes a lot of sense. And maybe other businesses as well, you know, will will do the same in, in putting in solar in their warehouses or offices and and allow yeah. charging. Yeah, I think I think once the banks are able to finance it, mm -hmm. we'll see the the adoption because I think a lot of the new vehicles, especially, are being financed. So I think if the bank is able to find a way to finance it or I guess value it in the right way, mm -hmm. then 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 adoption will follow. Because I imagine that not a lot of persons will be buying those vehicles cash anyway. So if the banks are able to finance it next week, we'll probably start seeing them a lot sooner. So that's that's kind of my my thoughts on it. No, no, that's a very good point. And I think they're 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 financing some of them. Um is my understanding. I think is it um, there's a bunch of them who um, is it Stewart's group who's bringing in some Chinese cars and I believe they're getting financing on them. I, uh, I heard of a company. I don't remember the name right now, but I, yeah. yeah, I did hear of one or two of them um, as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Alexander. Really enjoyed this conversation. At the very final question I have for you is: so you're coming up on the end of your financial year. Mm -hmm. Are we to expect a record year? What kind of what what kind of as much as you're allowed to say, because I know that your rules yeah. around these things, what can we expect from Tropical for the end of the year? Yeah, absolutely. I need to be careful, but but for sure, at nine months, uh, so we're, with three quarters down, one more to go. We have already surpassed last year um, at nine months. Yes, I didn't notice that. Um, and so, yes, it will be a record year. I can't say that because it's it's obvious we've already surpassed and. And um, and this last quarter is following the same trend as as the, the previous one. So I think I think it will be a good year. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciated this opportunity. We hope to have you join us again soon. I think I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts uh, a little bit more about you know like your investing strategy, you know things like that, because I think our our investors will be interested in hearing. CEO's perspective on, on on those kind of things. So I'll, I'll definitely reach out to you for yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm happy to share that. I, I definitely, it is um, for sure one of my passions and hobby and all of that yes, is, is investing. Yeah. So I have, yeah, happy to share my thoughts on it and my experiences, my mistakes and and as well. <laughs> exactly, that, that's, that, that's what we're here for, right? So learn, grow, invest. If we can learn from your mistakes and that helps us all, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. So take care. We'll see yeah, you man. Soon. Thank you too. Appreciate it. All right. all right. All the best. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I think that was a very, very good interview. Hopefully you got value out of it. Please take a moment to like the video if you're still here. I just have a few updates for you. That's why we're not um, ended for the session as yet. For those who checked out our Stocks for Beginners class on September 3rd, the video is still available for a little bit longer. It's just unlisted. So if you check the email, so if you registered, you will have gotten an email from us with a link to the video. The, so you can access the video in that way. If you would have been following us on any of our social media platforms, the video was posted there as well. So that link will still work for at least a couple more days. So go ahead and watch the video, make your notes, purchase the workbook if you need to to just you know, be sure to get that information before the, the period ends. Uh, if you have not done so yet, join us on Telegram. We have a growing community over on Telegram. So let me share that link right now so that you can join us over there. We do have groups on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So be sure to join us on those platforms. Uh, feel free to ask us questions at any time on any platforms. Persons have been reaching out to us via DMs, we really appreciate it. Uh, we enjoy the feedback that we've been getting, that you've been getting value from, from our interviews, from our videos, really means a lot to us. Really, really appreciate you guys. And finally, um, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. We're actually rolling out content on all platforms that is kind of unique to that platform to help it grow. So if you're on IG, we go live on Tuesdays to, to cover various topics that complement what we do over here on YouTube. If you're on Twitter, we're actually going to start doing some more threads to kind of, you know, um, share some of the highlights from the videos that we're doing here, post them as threads on Twitter. 
and then we're gonna start doing a little bit more we're gonna try and do some linkedin lives at some point to kind of help uh, grow our base over there so we're trying to touch all platforms slowly but surely so be sure to follow us on those platforms and of course we want you to subscribe to our youtube channel overall we just thank you for the support thank you for being here and i really hope to see you in the very next video learning is the key to successful investing and who doesn't want to invest in some way here at learn grow invest we focus on financial education all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance investing and building wealth we do this on the foundation of our faith in god if a more holistic approach is what you need check out our grow faith-based financial coaching program Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms.